the real reason why a discarded narcissist begged for your return. Hey there, everyone. It's great to have you back for another insightful discussion. Whether you're new here or a longtime supporter, thank you for joining us. Today, we're delving into a fascinating topic, the psychology behind why a discarded narcissist often attempts a comeback. It's no surprise when a narcissist resurfaces after being cast aside. Their motivations go beyond just reclaiming control or tying up loose ends. What truly drives them is their instinct for damage control. Narcissists excel at manipulating perceptions and smoothing over their misdeeds, especially in relationships. They fear losing their influence and want to preserve their image, even if it means revisiting a past they once discarded. Stay tuned as we uncover the nuances of this behavior and explore how to navigate such complexities in relationships. If you find this discussion intriguing, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your support means the world to us as we continue to explore these important topics together. Let's explore a fascinating aspect of narcissistic behavior, their dual lives. These individuals effortlessly switch personas between public and private spheres, crafting an image that contrasts sharply with their true selves. In public, they bask in admiration, often portraying themselves as pillars of virtue, always ready to extend a helping hand and bask in the praise of others. They thrive on this facade of benevolence, positioning themselves as community saints. However, behind closed doors lies a starkly different reality. Here, their primary concern isn't genuine care or empathy, but rather the preservation of their meticulously curated image. They guard this facade fiercely, often resorting to defensive measures when it is challenged. Despite their outward charm, their actions may betray their true nature, revealing inconsistencies that defy their carefully constructed persona. It's a perplexing contradiction. Their preoccupation with public perception clashes with behaviors that undermine their own image. They appear deeply concerned about how they are perceived while simultaneously engaging in behavior that contradicts their desired reputation. This duality poses a puzzle. How can one prioritize appearances while behaving in ways that undermine them? It's a paradox that underscores the complex nature of narcissistic personalities. When it comes time to part ways with these walking contradictions, yes, that's what they truly are, it's eye-opening. Seeing them for who they really are reveals a chaotic mix of virtues and vices. When you finally decide to cut ties, they'll undoubtedly try to justify themselves. Remember when you first got together, they were singing your praises to everyone, painting you as their perfect match, their ultimate joy. They spun tales of admiration and uniqueness, making you feel like the center of their universe. People around you echoed their praises, affirming you were their one and only. But soon cracks appeared in their fixade. You discovered they were juggling two or three other relationships behind your back. That's just their way. They lean on close family and friends who are well aware of their toxic traits, using them to sell you a false narrative filled with accolades. They showered you with praise, but as the relationship progressed, they started picking at your flaws, subtly criticizing what once they praised. Privately, they downplayed these issues to their inner circle, making excuses for your imperfections while secretly undermining your confidence. Then came the breaking point, the lies, the betrayals, the gaslighting. It all became too much. Despite their pleas and promises of change, you reached your limit. You made the tough call to cut them out of your life for good, ending the cycle of deception and manipulation once and for all. When you make the bold move to cut ties, it hits them where it hurts, their pride takes a serious blow. They're not equipped to handle rejection, especially when they can't control the narrative. Their whole game has been about manipulating situations to their advantage, keeping you in check. So when you beat them to the punch and end things first, it triggers a deep sense of shame and humiliation. Shame is their Achilles heel, their ultimate weakness. Being discarded leaves them exposed and looking foolish in front of their circle. They simply can't cope with that. They'll pull out all the stops to lure you back in. You might hear promises of grand gestures, things they never bothered with when you were together. They'll show up unexpectedly, trying to sweep you off your feet with sudden changes and empty promises. You're left questioning their motives. Why now, and why didn't they do any of this when we were together? The truth is, back then, they didn't feel the sting of shame and rejection like they do now. 
That's why they're desperate to avoid it at all costs. If they keep circling back, using increasingly deceptive tactics, spinning tales about emergencies or tragedies to garner sympathy, it's all to maintain that flawless image they've carefully crafted for everyone else. Once you've exited their narrative, leaving them without a cover-up plan, they're thrown off balance. They didn't anticipate this, caught completely off guard. Their pursuit to regain control isn't just about dominating the situation. It's about wreaking havoc on your life too. But what really stings them? It's the shame and rejection they feel after you've shown them the door, after you've cut them off. It's like a tidal wave crashing into their ego. A narcissist in this state can't sleep, can't concentrate, might even struggle to keep a job. They'll resort to extreme measures to bury those feelings of shame and rejection. Their main goal? To erase any blemish on their flawless decide, to ensure no one sees them in a negative light. That's why they're so desperate to pull you back into their orbit. Getting you back is like a quick fix for their wounded pride. When they successfully reel you in again, it's like a shot of adrenaline straight into their veins. It temporarily silences the alarm bells of shame and rejection, allowing them to resume their usual manipulations and soak up the attention they crave. When a narcissist finds themselves starved of attention due to overwhelming shame and rejection, it's like their world is running on fumes, barely holding together. This is unacceptable to them. When they charge back at you like a bull, it's all about damage control. They urgently need to repair their tarnished image, their goal. To rewrite the narrative, painting themselves as innocent victims and casting you as the troublemaker. That's the story they desperately want everyone to believe. But if you've had the courage to sever ties with these manipulative individuals, let them stew in their own shame and regret. Because let's be clear, if they wanted to avoid feeling rejected and ashamed, they should have treated you with decency from the start. It's that straightforward. So I want to emphasize this point. If you've successfully liberated yourself from toxic relationships, I applaud your strength. It takes bravery to prioritize your well-being. Remember, don't let them lure you back with their manipulations, and don't allow them to shift their shame onto you. That's just another tactic to diminish your worth and disrespect you. Stay resolute, protect yourself, and shield your loved ones from their harmful influence. Stay strong and take care of yourselves as you move forward. Remember, you're never alone on your path. Let's support each other through this journey. If you found this helpful, please show your appreciation by liking, subscribing, and sharing with others who might find it beneficial. If you're seeking further resources, visit the link in the description for a complimentary book and information on personalized consultations. Sending positive energy and warmth to all. Until next time, take good care and stay resilient. Farewell for now, everyone.